I have actinic keratoses, which are pre-skin cancers. Um, they can become, at a certain point, basal cells or squamous cell carcinomas. So we do a treatment here in the office called Blue Light, and it will help treat those actinic keratoses, and it can help prevent future basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas of the face, neck, and chest, and hands, which is helpful so that maybe we don't have to do most in the future. So the steps in doing this uh, ALA blue light is uh, we'll first clean her face. Uh, the skin is actually cleaned with soap and water first and then acetone. Acetone is to decrease the skin to uh, make sure all the surface oils are removed. Um, we will apply the Levulon stick. So ALA stands for amino levulonic acid. Tinocaritoses are precancers. Uh, often this procedure is best when people have several small precancers, small or large precancers scattered on their face. Um, what they, what actinic keratoses look like, they're actually harder to see. They're easier to feel, so you may or may not be able to see them on Carrie, but she could certainly feel them. So if you touch, for example, right in this area, it feels like a little sandpaperish patch, and that's two actinic keratoses right next to each other. You can see a little rough patch here on the left cheek, and if you feel it, it just feels like sandpaper, whereas over here it's smooth. And lots of people start to think they just have dry skin or eczema or something like that, when really it's this actinic change or actinic keratoses. And we can treat that, we can completely remove it by doing these uh, procedures called the ALA blue light. We will apply the Levulon stick. So ALA stands for amino levulonic acid, and the This, this part of the procedure is what activates the amino levulonic acid. That part does burn, sting uh, during the procedure. After it's done, you know, we cool the skin with uh, water and some cooling gels, and the patient has to stay out of the sun for 48 hours. They can't get any sun at all. It generally takes about five days to a week to completely heal. Okay, so I just wanted to touch base. It has gotten a little redder uh, since I started. It feels just like kind of a bad sunburn. Totally normal response. Uh, I'm gonna just relax, no sun for 48 hours, and uh, I should get a really good result. So there it is. So guys, I did the blue light on Friday and it is Sunday afternoon right now. I feel really tight in through here, like I'm gonna start peeling. Um, it's a little itchy, but pretty good. Um, I think this product saved me. Uh, I also thoroughly enjoyed washing my face with this product it's the Aven zero calm cleansing oil felt really good got my face really clean okay guys so it's monday morning i'm peeling or i'm peeling a lot here it just feels tight it's itchy it's frustrating don't like to look like this don't like to feel like this but i know it's important so there's a good look for you guys Okay guys, so it's uh, Tuesday. I did the procedure on Friday. It's almost comical how bad I look. Mm, let's have a good close look at that. Ugh. Wah. I can't wait for the after pictures. So this morning, let's see, it's uh, Wednesday morning and I woke up. I started to do this, but then I was like, oh, I should do this for everybody on my YouTube video. You guys have no idea how challenging it is to be a YouTube star, YouTube sensation. I'm just going to blow up the internet. Okay, so I have all these peels on my face and what I'm doing right now is I'm getting some hot water and a face cloth and uh, I'm just going to like 
gently rub rub my face where I'm peeling. So it seems the last part of the peel is on my forehead. Gently. But I did this yesterday and I didn't show you guys, but I look so much better. And I was able to cover it up a little bit with the Alcom. So, you know, there's a bunch of peel on my on my face uh, cloth. Just rubbing it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it one more time. Little product endorsement. <laughs> okay. And you guys, I know I look pretty nasty, but the skin that has peeled off and underneath that skin that's peeled off, like right here, oh my gosh, my skin has never felt softer. And I know I still have all these red spots. Those will subside and I'm super excited. I think I got a really good result. So after that, I can pat dry and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one again. I love this stuff. This has saved me, okay? Uh, so I just put all that on. And I'm just gonna literally saturate my face with this stuff. Mmm, feels good. All right. And I'm sure Here's my, I did my chest too. Getting it done. New year, new carry. All right guys, that's it for now. So we're three weeks after Carrie's ALA blue light procedure and um, I just examined her face. Uh, you could see now that where she had some actinic keratoses in this area and down here, they're completely gone. Now her skin feels completely smooth. She doesn't have any more of those sandpaper-like rough spots that are pre-cancers. So um, generally after this procedure, uh, we've, if we've treated one area, a uh, patient can expect about an 80% reduction in pre-cancers for the next five years after the procedure. So it doesn't mean that she'll get zero pre-cancers, but she should have you know, smoother uh, skin and less of a chance of skin cancer. Um, for at least that period of time. Uh, Carrie was just asking me about, about other spots on her face, little red spots or little sunspots. Um, the blue light procedure sometimes does also give a cosmetic improvement as well as an improvement in precancers, but sometimes there are other spots that, you know, don't go away that the patient would like to treat. So if we'd like to treat this redness here, we could do our vascular laser or optimize pulse light. Uh, treatment to, to this area and this area and for little brown spots there's um, uh, laser other laser procedures we could do to tighten the pores or other things but um, Carrie got a good result from her ALA blue light procedure and the next most important thing is sun protection every day with a good uh, sunscreen every morning and uh, regular skin exams at least twice a year to catch any of these things early if things do pop up. Okay, so I'm discussing like my protocol that I used post-procedure after my blue light treatment with a patient. She's in a unique situation because she has an allergy to Aquaphor. Uh, so Aquaphor is usually what we recommend for most patients. I personally dislike Aquaphor, uh, that feeling of that thickness and that just uh, greasiness? greasiness and it gets all in your hair and I just don't like it. So I tried to avoid it after my blue light. Procedure. When I left, I used this Stratamed. It's safe to use immediately post-procedure. I used it all over my face, and you only have to do it twice a day, which is kind of nice, all right? After you let this dry on your face, you can use the sickle fate to calm and just to relieve the heat and the kind of discomfort that you might be feeling, and it also feels a little bit moisturizing, okay? When 
the next that night after my blue light procedure I cleansed with this cleansing oil which was very soothing and it was nice to kind of have all the gook off my face it didn't hurt at all didn't sting and I would highly recommend this I use this throughout my recovery so cleanse with this then I would uh, use this twice a day uh, for the first three or four days and I would follow with with the sickle fate okay and then later once I stopped using this after day three I was using just these two things in fact I'm one week out from doing the procedure and I used this after I washed my face this morning I let it sit for a few minutes and then I put the uh, zero calm balm on okay and so I really wouldn't want to do the recovery without any of these things. This one is more of like, just helps you to heal faster, doesn't really feel good, doesn't really give you any relief, but these ones were very calming and I was grateful to have them.